A tax plan as early as today. But wrangling continues over whether to include a trigger for tax increases if economic growth doesn't meet revenue targets. Other things too. Now Republicans must have 50 of their 52 members vote yes in order for the bill to advance. Joining us with more is the ranking member of the House Budget Committee, Democratic Representative John Yarmouth of Kentucky. Congressman, thank you for joining. Good morning, Vonnie. Good to be with you. Last time we spoke, you were concerned about transparency. Given that we might actually have a full Senate vote today and maybe even have the bill come out of Senate, has that concern abated for you? <laughs> Well, I don't know how it could. Uh, this bill is actually still being drafted. Uh, they're making changes on the fly uh, to try and make sure that they have their 50 votes. I, I would venture to say there's not one Republican who really understands what this uh, what this legislation would do. Uh, you know, the, the Treasury Department promised an analysis of uh, the plan of what it would do to the economy. Uh, curiously, they say they can't do that now. I suspect it's because they would find the same thing that virtually every other analysis this has, and that is that there's no way that the tax cuts pay for themselves through uh, added growth. So uh, th this bill is something that they're trying to sell basically the way Donald Trump did yesterday by saying, oh, this doesn't help me. This is going to be a beautiful Christmas present. He doesn't have the slightest idea, and I guarantee you the American people don't. You were watching this process. How viable is it that we get tax reform through this method, that things get added in order to get a vote here and a vote there, and suddenly the whole tax structure of the United yeah. States has changed? I know. I mean, that's, that's the astounding thing. This is a $5 trillion change in the economy. Uh, think about that. $5 trillion is what's being uh, uh, dealt with here. And again, without a single hearing, without any public discussion on the details, and again, without ver with very few people, if any, understanding how all these pieces fit together and how they would affect the economy. So, uh, you know, I, I think that they probably will be able to squeeze 50 votes out today. There's still considerable differences between the House and Senate versions, and they'd have to be worked out in conference. Whether they can work those out, uh, you know, hopefully we get to have some input. We haven't been uh, in involved in any of the discussions so far. We've been totally shut out, we being the Democrats. Uh, and then they have to come back to both the House and the Senate to approve the one bill. I think the odds of that are still no better than 50-50. Congressman, how often Optimistic or pessimistic, it could be either. Are you about any deficit hold that this legislation might create? Well, clearly it's going to create a deficit. I mean, the, the plan by its own admission creates a $1.4 trillion deficit over the next 10 years. If you add the uh, additional interest cost to that deficit, you're somewhere in the neighborhood of $2 trillion added to the debt over 10 years. Uh, no, virtually nobody disagrees with that. And if there's a serious question as to, as to whether this is advisable or even necessary at this time. Uh, particularly when you get somebody like Goldman Sachs saying that they estimate that the total addition to GDP over 10 years will be less than 1%. Uh, that doesn't seem to be worth the, the price of a $2 trillion addition to the debt. Congressman Yarmouth, uh, I want to ask you how significant is the risk of a shutdown next month? I think it's a, there's a significant risk. Uh, you know, so far the Republicans uh, have basically said we're going to try to do this on our own, try to get come up with 218 votes. They haven't been able to do that since they took over the ha the House in 2010. Uh, they've always relied on Democratic votes, and because there's some Republicans who won't vote for any appropriations mm -hmm. bill. So I, I suspect, uh, you know, unless they're willing to sit down and have serious negotiations with us about our priorities, which in include things things like the CHIP program and DREAMers and, and the uh, cost-sharing reductions for health care, then we're going to have a serious problem in, on, on our side in providing enough votes for uh, any, any funding measure to get through. So, you know, I don't think the risk, I still think it's better, better than 50-50 chance that we won't shut the government down, but I certainly think it's a distinct possibility. Well, what's the red line for you? Is it the CHIP program? Is it DACA? You know, is there something that you'd be willing to see a government <laughs> shut down over? And, and do you have that leverage? Well, I don't, I don't think, the, the Democratic caucus has not said there is a red line. Uh, we have several priorities that we want to see dealt with in order to provide votes for the spending bill. Here's the, here's the twist, though. There are members of the Democratic caucus for whom a, an issue like the, uh, the Dreamers, you, you can take somebody like Dick Durbin on the Senate side, he's already said that's a red line for him. So if there are 
30 Democrats who have a red line with Dreamers, if there are another 25 that have a red line with something else, then it becomes problematic for us to get the, the votes that would be necessary to keep the government open. So uh, it's not just one issue, it's, it's several, and we're running out of time. Congressman, can I get your reaction to a report just a few moments ago from the New York Times that perhaps the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will be replaced in the coming weeks and it would be with Mike Pompeo, who then might be replaced by Tom Cotton? Well, I'm not so interested in who the person is. I'm interested in somebody who has the respect for diplomacy and understanding of the need to fill many of the vacant posts in our, with the, where we're losing career diplomats right and left. Uh, we have a serious problem with the hollowing out of that, uh, that very, very important agency. And whether it's Tillerson or Pompeo or Cotton, I don't care as long as they actually uh, care about uh, having a functioning State Department. That's my big concern right now. Representative John Yarmouth of Kentucky, thank you for your time today. Much appreciated.